So in this uh, video we will um, add another uh, building, another tower here, because there is an empty space. And here we have uh, one of my typical uh, cityscapes. And so here are the final parts and here you can see the ink drawing and the guiding lines I'm uh, drawing for the higher buildings. So there's no primarily uh, sketch or drawing or under drawing uh, with the smaller uh, houses or the buildings. I do them directly with uh, ink with fountain pen. As I mentioned before, I'm doing uh, the guiding lines. Therefore, I have a longer a ruler. So, because I don't want the higher buildings to be a little bit angled or loosey, and so uh, I use um, some guiding lines that they are really straight up. Therefore, I use uh, this is a rotoring a. 600, a technical uh, pencil, but of course you can use any pencil you want. Um, maybe not a too soft one, so that we got nice thin lines. And when I'm planning to do another uh, tower, I'm looking for a good position so that it's not in the same place like another line, another tower. So I usually let him start here and maybe here on the other side. And now we can use this one to do only some horizontal lines. It's not so important that they're in the right position because I can draw under these lines and do a parallel one. And there is no special idea or concept about where the floors are. This is just that it looks nice and interesting. This dimension is quite okay, I think. Also, I'm looking uh, to have a group of towers that may be more lonely towers and then also again a group of towers so that they are not that even, not in a regular um, position. So more mixed, one big crowd here and sometimes there's only a big crowd here and here is just a tree or or some, only some houses or buildings. So yeah, and that's all I do with the pencil. And now I take my fountain pen. This is a Pelican 205M and you get it on Amazon. And this is a very light one, so when you when you're drawing a uh, longer time, it's not that heavy and you can, and I like it, it's well balanced. And uh, the most important thing, it's with an extra fine nib, so I can do these fine lines I want in my, in my um, drawings. Inside there is the converter inside and um, I use, like always, uh, the sketch ink so-called sketch ink from Aurora and Klingner and it's waterproof and it's made to use it for fountain pens. So sorry that you can't see the label, it's much used. So typically I start on the top. I recommend to use these uh, fountain pens daily or every second or third day with this special waterproof ink because uh, this ink is made for fountain pen, pens, but it's uh, with um, very much pigment in it. So after one week, it could uh, dry out a little bit, but then mostly it's enough to tip it into water a little bit, wash it, 
clean it and then it's okay to use it again just all the time try to if it's dry enough and that it not makes your sparkles or something uh, something you don't want on your paper you see these guiding lines are very very helpful for longer lines for future powers even now when there is no helping line when you practice enough you can do it without to draw straight lines um, it's it's a good practice just to take a piece of paper take a fountain pen a micro pen whatsoever, whatsoever and draw straight lines with the same distance you see and this is what I did the first month of learning my job as a lithographer decades ago of course and of course you can do it uh, very slow and a little bit wobbling but not that way except you want it and you can do this while talking on the phone if there is a mistake if there is a, a not that straight line that doesn't matter that much because in the whole picture there are so many details and lines so nobody will recognize it you see there is a difference in the length of these balconies or terraces or whatsoever so let's do here some other details than here and nobody care these are something like wires or antennas the reason why uh, in this picture I have these relatively thin and high towers is because I started here on the uh, left bottom corner and this first house was too small so I was thinking okay what can we do that we get such high tall buildings and to be a little bit in a relation with this uh, smaller one family houses yeah, and then I tried this as a solution and and um, it's quite okay I like it so let's do this with fast forward And finally we take our watercolor here in this case it's an indigo mixed with uh, some sienna or umbra any brown tone is be would be good and important for me is to use uh, enough water so that we get a nice even uh, surface of these uh, towers with nice gradients from one color into another 
and very important even when you're doing a larger errors with watercolor uh, be sure to angle a little bit the the board so that the water is only floating in one direction so it's floating down and so you don't get an awful pattern awful pattern of this uh, when the the, the fresh water color runs into tried or half tried errors of watercolor So hopefully this was a little bit helpful for you. This is the final picture once again and hope to see you next time. Bye.